How you going? Uh, just thought I'd run through with you how um, all my stuff that I'm going to be taking on a on a sort of it's, a, it's an overnight but probably two day backpacking trip that me and my brother are doing. It's our first one, so I thought I'd sort of just before the trip, so I thought I'd go through it and show you what I'm actually putting in my pack, um, some of the reasons why, and then I'll do a video afterwards of um, sort of what worked, what didn't work, where my thinking should probably change. I'll run through a bit of everything because I've got my backpack pretty much packed. Uh, I've got food, I've got my water, so I'll do a quick rundown and then let you let you see how it goes. So, uh, that's alright. <clears throat> so over here I've got, I can't really see that. Over here I've got all my uh, my sort of spare clothes. Um, I've put everything in a sort of compartment, also in these little dry bags. I reckon they're going to be a pretty good idea of sort of organising my pack because the pack I'm going to be using is also going to be used for um, uh, when I'm not at camp and out hunting. So I figure it would be a pretty good thing to be able to take all of my gear out that I'm not wanting to carry around with me, put that all somewhere at camp. In another, in another bag that I've got, which I'll show you in a minute, and then from there go out camping, so I'm just not carrying unnecessary weight. <clears throat> so what I've got, and I'll run through this bit, is I've got thermals to sleep in at night, just in case it gets pretty cold. Um, one of the things that I've realised from hunting a fair bit is the less clothes that you can have on in your sleeping bag, the better off you'll be. Just make sure you've got a really good sleeping bag, and if you Normally I just sleep in, if it's really, really cold, I'll just sleep in thermals and then possibly chuck a beanie on because the way, a, the way a sleeping bag works is it works off your own body heat. So the more clothes that you put on, the sleeping bag actually struggles to um, generate that heat and keep you warm. So you, in fact, you, you end up being fairly cold. Um, so that's what I've done. That's why I always pack thermals to sleep in. I've also got some fingerless gloves. Um, I'm just a fan of the fingerless gloves because uh, you, you've still got that precision grip, which I think is pretty important when you're dealing with all of this. <clears throat> I've got a poncho um, just for around the campfire if it's raining, so I don't just have to sit under the tarp the whole time. And the good thing about a poncho is it's really, really light. And also you just chuck it on and then you're done. You don't have to worry about a big heavy jacket. It takes up next to no room. I could probably get it smaller if I wanted to. But it's just the first trip, so I'll just see how I go. Also got a couple of singlets, um, which are, you know, always need singlets. And then just a jumper. Um, and this is a, I think it's a cotton jumper. Um, and that's just for around the campfire as well. So I'm not, I'm not um, getting camp smells all the way through my jumper that I'm gonna be hunting in as well. All of that fits pretty neatly in this bag. Next bag I've got is for my hunting clothes the next day. So pre predominantly I'll be wearing the same clothes that I did the day before, but I always, always like to put a new uh, top on and also I would probably put a new singlet on if need be, if it's going to be cold. The weather this weekend isn't going to be too cold, so I reckon it'll probably be alright. Um, and then socks and jocks. Keep that in a separate bag as well so that that doesn't get camp smells throughout the day and that's all, it's all in its own little packet and I just can reach into my bag and grab it out. In this bag that I've got here, um, this is a bag that's going to come with me and it's got all my essentials for, <coughs> it's got all my essentials for sort of day to day and if I get stuck in the bush as well. So I've got a bit of rope. A bit of rope's always good if you need to hang meat up and take, do a couple of trips out. It's always good to keep it up off the off the ground, and also you never know when you when you're gonna need it. I've got probably about thirty odd meters of hoochie cord, and then this other heavier nylon rope. Not too sure what I'm going to use them for, but I'd just rather take them and not need them than need them and not have them. We've got two space blankets here. Uh, the thing with space blankets is they sort of get, they're a bit awkward to wrap yourself around in um, and also once you use them they're impossible to get back into this shape. Um, 
One of the good things that my brother's found is they're sort of like space blanket sleeping bags. I think they're about 20 bucks each off Amazon and I think that would probably be a better, a better addition than this uh, just because it's sort of more versatile and it will keep in a lot more of that heat. Toilet paper, not sure if that's enough but hey, that's alright. A lighter and some candles. Um, candles and a lighter are, are pretty good for when the bush is, is fairly wet. So you can always have that constant heat source and then set your, get your fire going. The other thing I have for those is these little, um, if you can see that, these little fire lighter individual packets. And all you do is you just light the corner of them, leave them in their packet, and then you um, just let it go. It works like a normal fire lighter. I've been caught in the bush once when it was really wet. I didn't have fire lighters. And that there was no way I was, going to, I was going to be able to actually get a fire going because everything was just too wet. So I reckon if, if you've got those little fire lighters, they'll be a really good thing for when the bush is soaking. You just get work off the same principles as building a fire, just real small kindling. Even if it is soaking wet, I think those would be enough if you started off with a small enough base to get that going to then slowly build and build and build. So I reckon they're probably, and they're light as as well, and I reckon they're probably a really good thing. And then map and a compass. I do have a GPS, but I always like to have a map and a compass. One, the GPS might fail, and two, it gives you that real big broad picture of where you're going and where you think you are as well. And you can use them in conjunction with the GPS to reference yourself, and you can sort of get good ideas of what gullies you should be heading into next, which, which ones are facing which direction, and I think they're a pretty good, it's, a map and a compass is a pretty good tool. <clears throat> it's important that you know how to read a map and a compass as well. Um, I'll try and do a video on that later, uh, but definite, it's a must. I got lost in the bush, the only time I got lost in the bush, I didn't have a map and a compass, it's a little bit foggy, and <clears throat> I would have, I would have, paid a lot of money to have one, to be honest. <clears throat> Next is what I'm going to be hunting in. So, how, I, how me and my brother uh, started hunting, we started it sort of last year towards the end of the year before, um, and I found it works really, really well. Thermal bottoms. Uh, these are Hunt Tech shorts. <clears throat> and then just a light base, a light sort of layer close to your close to your skin. So I'd have a singlet as well, which I just don't have in there at the moment. Uh, one of these, these sort of tops, and then also a um, a cotton jumper. Uh, if you could do wool, wool would probably be better because it holds its heat really well, even if it's wet. Um, that I find is perfect to hunting because you're moving around a fair bit. I don't, you don't normally get too cold. Um, or cold at all. <clears throat> Neck warmer as well, and also a face mask. Find a face mask is really well, works really well because when you have <clears throat> when you have a bit of sun on you, if you don't have campaign on and stuff like that, which I sort of tend to avoid because it just runs off, and also like you look like a bit of a wanker. But <clears throat> that sort of it sort of breaks up that shape of your face a little bit, but it also takes the glare out of your cheeks which I think is really important so the deer just don't catch it. Um, I've found that works pretty well. <clears throat> the, only other thing, the only other things that I have here, these are Morocco 30 Gators. Um, I'm definitely sold on these. There's a video on YouTube of a bloke wrapping his arm in this and getting bitten by, I think it's, it's either a puff adder or, or a death adder. I'm just not sure, I know one's not here in Australia, but grabs his arm in it, snake can't bite through him. Um, they're about 200 bucks, give or take. I think you might get change out of 200 bucks, but insurance for when you're in the bush. And they they do get a little bit hot, but they're really comfortable. Once they're broken in, I reckon they're, they're fine. They stay up on your legs really well. Um, so yeah, definitely sticking with those. <laughs> Next thing is um, sleeping bag. I've got a Mountain Design um, down sleeping bag. This is in a five five liter bag. It's pretty tight. I could maybe compress it, not much, but slightly. <clears throat> They're really good sleeping bags. Down is something that you always want to buy, but. 
they're fairly expensive, worth the investment though because you keep really warm with them and if they get wet they hold their heat a lot better than synthetics as well. <clears throat> and also you can get them um, cleaned out, re reconditioned and stuff like that. I've looked into it, <clears throat> there's a place in Point Cook in Victoria who does it and it's about 180 bucks to get it cleaned out and <clears throat> to get um, an extra 100 grams of down put in it so it increase your sleeping bag by about 1 or 2 degrees which I think is really good. Um, because this blue thing under here, I'm not sure if you can see it, uh, we've got a tarp. We're going to be using a tarp system for now until we can save up enough money to put it to get a tent. Looking at a Hildeberg tent, I'll go into those. If I ever get one, I'll do a full review on it and whatnot. <clears throat> but one of the things that I got from my, um, from my army days is a bivy bag. And a bivy bag is essentially like a waterproof sleeping bag outer shell. Um, me and my brother, we tested it in the backyard the other day. I was inside it. He had the hose going on me for a fair bit. No water came through. They're about $200, $300 uh, from Aussie Disposals, but you can get them on eBay for about, I think about 100 and something dollars. But very well worth it, especially if you get a tarp because it allows you to, to zip your sleeping bag all the way up and it's completely enclosed. <clears throat> what I'm thinking I might be able to do with this as well all the stuff that I take out of my backpack, I can probably zip it up into my bivy bag and that way <clears throat> I know that everything's pretty safe and secure, no animal's going to come through and rip it apart and all of that, especially since I'm going to be leaving my food at camp. Um, <clears throat> next things, uh, I'll shift you. Next things I've got here are more, more so for when I'm out and I'm actually hunting and, and doing whatever it is I'm doing. So again, the small bags, the red tabs here, I've got them because this is going to be my first aid bag. <coughs> you guys will probably have a hundred different uh, things that I should put in my first aid bag. Uh, my thought behind them is... I reckon the more bandages I have, the better it is because no matter how big or small my, my cut is or I need to bandage my leg because it's broken, snake bites, things like that, um, I just think it, the more I have, the better. So I've got several different bandages. So I've got these sort of bigger ones, a couple of the medium size, and these are the, um, what are they? They're that heavyweight bandage material, I'm just not sure what the material is. And a couple of these smaller sort of, you know, these thinner ones that you wrap. So if I had a really big wound, I think what I'd do is I'd get one of these smaller ones, jam that in the wound to help stop the bleeding, and then wrap one of the bigger ones around it. Um, bigger ones are really good for snake bites. Um, and then also in here, I've got a couple of antiseptic wipes. I might, I could probably swap those for uh, some betadine or something like that, but there's a fair few in there. They didn't cost much, so and then a few big, a few big band aids. Um, I think better than the smaller band aids is the bigger ones because you can cut them to any size that you want. Again, that's just my thought of the bigger my wound is, I want to be able to treat that. I want to be able to treat a bigger wound rather than, a, than only have enough to treat a smaller wound. Um, I've also got some scissors and some tweezers, some antihistamines, because um, I'm a little bit allergic to bees, so I think that's a pretty good thing to have. And I've got a hydrolyte, but I should probably put a couple more hydrolytes in there. One of the things that I should really put in the first aid kit is a suture kit, which is a, a stitching kit. And I'd definitely put that in if I was going for a longer period of time and further away from any base vehicle or anything like that. Only thing with that is I have to learn how to stitch and I have to be willing to sort of do that surgery myself. Uh, if you want to see if you're up to that, there is actually a video on YouTube of a bloke 
um, cutting out his own hematoma in the snow. It's rancid, it's disgusting, but it's probably something that anyone who's going backpacking needs to look at and go, I need to be able to do that because in that scenario, that would save, it probably did save his leg because he gets a heap of blood out and whatnot. So <clears throat> definitely worthwhile uh, having. Uh, I've also got a skinning knife, a little diamond sharpener, and a little stone. Um, I probably don't need both. Uh, I like the diamond just because it gives you that, that quick uh, sharpening. Stone's pretty good. Maybe I might keep both of them. I might not, I'm not too sure. <coughs> I've also got this little, um, this little outdoor, uh, what is it? Outdoor edge knife. These are pretty good because they're, they've got a good blade on them. I, I did a whole pair with this knife, so and that was skinning it out for a rug mount as well. Held its edge really well, sharpens really well. Um, <clears throat> and then the other thing it's got, which is probably a bit of a novelty thing, but it does work, is this sort of gut hook, gut hook looking thing. And that's just for when you're gutting it. You can slide up. The other thing that I've used it for is splitting ribs out of a deer. It was a young deer, so I was able to get it, get the, the knife in there and just reef up, up the inner cage there and it split all of them out and I was able to get the ribs out. Uh, if you don't take deer ribs, definitely start taking them because they're, they're delicious. I'll do a video on them. If I get, if I get, a, um, if I get a deer, we'll do some, uh, some cooking as well. Uh, I've got the game bags. Uh, this is just um, a little tub that's full of uh, flour and I use that for checking the wind. I find that this is better for checking the wind than a lighter because if you're in real close uh, proximity to a deer and you need to be really quiet, I find that the lighter that... Uh, where is one? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I find that the lighter that you can't really get that too much quieter then and that could be enough to to spook the deer to send it on its way whereas this is just a shake and you actually really get to see how everything travels I did used to put talcum powder in there but talcum powder has a smell and I think that that would probably tick off a few of the deer as well so flour doesn't really have a smell well I don't think it does if there's anything else that you guys think I should be using let me know um, <coughs> So yeah, that's everything that I'm going to take out with me. GPS gum and rhinos. Um, read really, really good things about them. Used it all, all last year. The GPS function on it is amazing and I urge everyone to get it because when you go back with, get your GPS back home, you can actually link it up to your computer and you can overlap all where you've been and all your waypoints on Google Earth. And it's a really, really good tool to be able to plan your next hunts because you can mark tracks that you want to take um, before you go on your trip. So you can walk up somewhere in the dark. I'm actually doing that for the first time this trip. So I'll let you know how that goes as well. Just a cup for drinking. Um, that would stay back at camp. And then the next things I have in here is my, my cooking stuff. So... I don't have a gas burner at the moment. I will probably end up getting one, but I've got this little um, kerosene lighter from one of those Trangia stoves. I've sort of cannibalized that just to save on a bit of weight. So I've got that. This is just an old, um, an old bit of a tin can that I've cut a few holes in. So that's just gonna sit in there on the ground and then I put my, my pot on top of that to cook. I reckon that should work all right. Might not have enough holes in here, but See how I go. Um, a heap more of these little fire lighters um, for back at camp. Lighter, of course, and a torch. This is an LED torch. I'd recommend that when you're looking at torches, look for LED torches. I, I need to get a headlamp um, because obviously having your hands free is definitely a giant bonus. And uh, this does have a little clip on it, but I'll probably need to upgrade it soon or possibly add another torch in. But the LED torches, they've got a really white light and their light goes really, really fast. So when you are walking in the dark in the bush, you don't have this real narrow field of focus. It gives you a real wide field of focus and it allows you to 
Now, it can be a little bit panicking being in the bush in the dark and you can be really disorientated. That's where the GPS would come into, a, into it really, really well because you're able to follow the tracks that you previously were on. Um, but yeah, a white light and a big field of view is definitely a must. <coughs> uh, so uh, I've got salt and all-purpose all seasoning. These, they're probably a bit heavy and a bit big for what I'm really going to be using, using them for, but just as an experiment. Um, some dishwashing cloths, uh, they're just some scourers. Um, spoon and a utensil to get the, the pots off the, um, off the fire without burning myself. A couple of tea bags. Now this, this here is a bit of a tarp and I'm thinking I'll keep that with me so that then I can lay meat out on a clean surface. Because I always used to just sort of chuck them on a bit of ferns or something like that but you always find that you never really are able to find that clean patch of dirt and you just get uh, dirt leaves and, and sticks and everything on the meat and I find that it just adds to, like, I'm not really too concerned about the germs or anything like that because you cook it enough and it's all fine. But it's more just adds to the hassle when you get home and you have to clean all of this dirt and stuff off. Because you, you get this, this film on the, on the deer, on the meat, and then you sort of have to skin all of this film off to get the dirt off. It's, it's sort of fairly hard to wash it off. Um, but that, that's just me, so I'm, I'm experimenting with that. Um, also got just a bit of a towel for wiping up and washing up and all of that. These two pots, uh, so one would be for boiling water, the other one would just be for cooking in. Just so that you don't have those, those mixtures of tastes in your food. Uh, I, I tend to try and avoid it if I can. <coughs> Uh, water bottle, I do also have, um, my pack's a little bit limited at the moment with how uh, I can carry water. Um, the food that I've got is fairly heavily water dependent, so one of the things that I will need to add into my backpack is definitely a, um, a water filtration system and also another way to store water. So I've got a camelback, but like I said, it just doesn't really marry up with my, with my system how it is. Um, so what I'll probably be doing is carrying the, the bladder in uh, empty and using that, like filling that up once I've got the uh, purifier, filling that up, leaving that at camp and that's as, a, as an additional water source but that probably only gives me about four litres of water which really sort of isn't enough. Um, so I definitely do need to look at that a bit more. <coughs> Crocs are a really, really good thing to have around the, the camp. Uh, gets you out of your hunting boots and it airs your feet out. They're really, really light, so I think they're... Like, I've used them a fair, fair few times just on normal hunting trips, but I think they're a really, really good addition. Um, and like I said, really light, keeps your feet... It gives your, chan your feet a chance to air and just gets you out of the, the tight hunting boots. <coughs> The other thing I've got here is I've got a 60 litre dry bag and the reason I've got that is um, I probably went a bit overboard uh, with the 60 litre dry bag, however it does come with an attachment to turn it into a backpack. So my thinking is in the future when I do go on those longer trips I can get all of my stuff that was in my backpack into the dry bag. Um, if I need to load up meat or anything like that, I can put the meat and stuff in the backpack and then carry out the dry bag on, on my front or attach it somewhere to my backpack and it keeps them all separate so I don't have blood going through everything and it's also just sort of a better way for me to distribute the weight. Um, just a thought, I'll see how it goes, I'll try and, try and give it a shot this weekend but I'm not sure. And the other thing I've got is a self-inflatable mattress. This is just a, a race, race tent city one. It's a full length one. Um, it's not too bad. The valve on it is a little bit stuffed, so it's actually not self-inflating. I have, actually have to blow it up. Um, that's it in terms of gear. The only other thing that we'll go through is I'll go through my food. Um, and I'll show you that now. 
Now food, I'm keeping that all again in another dry bag. Food's just a bit of an experiment at this stage. Um, just to sort of see what works, what doesn't work. Um, it's probably a little bit on the heavy side now. Uh, plan is to get a dehydrator and do a lot of this ourselves as well because dehydrated fruit especially and, um, and meats and things, they're really, really expensive and they taste crap as well. Um, so the plan is to eventually get a, get a dehydrator and then once I, move, once I have that and I start processing some animals, I can get all of my stuff um, organized um, you know, beforehand and all of it dehydrated and then I can start doing my meals like that. So, a couple of things I've got, a couple of bags of trail mix. Um, my trail mix is just a couple of fruit bars, some, some nuts, some apricots and some blueberries. I'm trying to keep it a fairly slow release energy and I've portioned them up into individual bags just so I don't have one big bag with all this stuff going around here because you get a fair bit of a mix of flavours and it can taste a bit a bit terrible um, and also portioning it up I've, I just really roughly did it, I haven't counted calories or anything like that but I think it would be a really good way on those bigger trips to be able to say well I need to be, I'm going to be burning so many calories and I need to be eating this packet um, a day when I'm walking around and then whatever else I need at night so I've got three of those <coughs> I've also got a bit of Gatorade powder. Um, Gatorade powder is really good because it's got all your uh, <clears throat> electrolytes, all the things that you're going to lose in your sweat. Um, it's really good to replace those. Also with your food, what, which is one of the reasons why I've got the salt. I like salt anyway. But you actually need to be putting a lot more salt on your food to replace all of those electrolytes um, and all of those minerals that you've lost. If you're just drinking water, you, you might find that you get a little bit lethargic and a little bit sluggish um, and a little, feel a little bit run down and that's because you've lost those minerals and your food isn't replacing that. So Gatorade's a good way to, to get that. Uh, one of the other things that I found is these um, wasabi almonds. They're just going to be left at camp because I'm not, I definitely don't want to be eating them and getting dehydrated whilst I'm out in the field. Um, but um, I'm a pretty big fan of spicy stuff, so I thought, yeah, why not? I'll give them a give them a go, and it could just be a good thing around the camp. Sort of, it could it could be that these are like slightly a morale booster on those longer trips, because you know you got something to have a laugh about and have a giggle about um, when you're sort of feeling the burn a bit. I could possibly swap these out for wasabi peas, but I just didn't find any. <clears throat> In terms of meals as well, um, these are like meals for actually sort of while we're at camp. I've got a couple of cups of soups just because they're a pretty good filler if you're really really cold or anything. It gives you that that instant sort of warmth and a bit of bit of food in your belly uh, whilst you're waiting for your fire to build up and stuff like that. So a cup of soups are always really really good to have. Um, <clears throat> now in terms of food so so I've got here some some of that ready cooked long grain rice. Uh, you don't have to microwave it, uh, obviously I'm not going to because I'll be in the bush. You can just put it in a pan and just mix it through, just warm it up because it's actually already cooked. And what I'm going to put with that is I'm going, I've got these, these tin chickens and again this is just an experiment. So this is um, tin chicken breast, um, fairly heavy so I probably need, need to find another way to, to put that meat in that meal. Uh, but also what I've got here is like a casserole soup sort of a thing so I can just dunk the chicken in, dunk the rice in, warm all that up, pour this this um, this uh, chicken casserole sauce all over that, <clears throat> add a few dehydrated peas and stuff that my brother's got and he's got dehydrated mash as well so we'll have mash, chicken and rice and that's that's a fairly solid meal. <coughs> And you need to be looking at those solid meals um, because of the amount of calories that you're going to be burning. I know it happens often that you just don't feel hungry because you're so tired and stuff like that, but you need to be replacing those meals. There's a really good podcast on that with Joe Rogan and Remy Warren where he's a professional outfitter. He, um, he, and he talks to Joe about how he was constantly losing weight because he wasn't eating enough and he's a small guy as well. 
Um, so worthwhile keeping in mind. The next thing I've got for dinner Saturday night is again some freeze dried rice, which that's just, as you can see, fairly heavily water dependent um, on the food. So it's probably something that I need to address, especially because I don't have much capacity for water. So it's something that I'll definitely need to be looking at. Um, yeah, so freeze dried rice, a bit of gravy, and the hope is that we shoot something on Saturday and then we can have some rice, some venison, and some gravy fresh off the fire, which would be awesome. Um, and then for breakfasts, because I never used to eat breakfast when I went out, but um, these, these freeze dried um, macaronis and things like that, I think they're going to be a really good thing to give you that, that boost of energy. The thing that you need to then just be conscious of is cook time and what time you actually want to be in your, in your hunting area because the worst thing that you'd want to do is get up a little bit late, have to then cook and then by the time you get out the sun's already up and the deer have moved. Um, ideally you want to be up high when that sun's coming up and then you're catching them moving up into their bedding areas. Um, that's pretty much it. I'll show you in the backpack. <clears throat> this is the backpack. It's a bit, um, it's a bit old. It's an old army style. I've got a Halo rangefinder which I've had so many problems with. Um, just up and stopped working on me. Trying to contact uh, Halo is like trying to get in contact with the Illuminati. They're impossible and they just offer you no customer service. So I, I would avoid Halo uh, rangefinders because uh, they're a fairly expensive product and they're not... You, I'd like to say you get what you pay for, but you actually don't get what you pay for in these, um, in these optics. The next thing, the next rangefinder that I'll, I'll, use, I'll get when I can afford it and when this one completely dies is a Vortex rangefinder. And Vortex are a really good rangefinder from what I've read, but one of the things that they offer, which no one else does, is they've got an unlimited unconditional warranty, and that's for the life of it. So no matter how it breaks, no matter how anything goes wrong with it, send it back to them and they'll replace it. For about, sort of, you can get them on eBay for about four or 500 bucks, but this was 200 bucks, so I would have definitely paid, it's my second one as well, so I would have definitely happily paid double to have that un that unconditional warranty. So that's definitely, definitely a bonus on those. Um, eventually I will update this backpack. Uh, thinking of Tenzing, if you guys have any other suggestions or you've used one, don't like it, let me know. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll pack it all up now. Uh, the only other thing that I didn't really go through is that tarp. It's a three meter by three meter tarp. Um, the plan is to just set it up in an A-frame. Uh, I'll pack this up, I'll weigh it and let you know sort of how it's sitting, what it looks like and then you know, next step is the actual hunting trip and then review after. But no, thanks for watching and um, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe if you can. I'll try and put out as much content as I can, whether it's hunting or fishing, see how we go. Thanks for watching guys.